not for these things, but to put things straight, which is literally what it says in this answer. Okay, so all business, and we need to go over the rules, is what he's talking about. Okay, now this was not one of your questions, but can you quickly tell me, Ralph, in his four page speech, covers five topics. He brings up five different topics over the course of four pages that he's delivering this speech to the group. Can you recall any of the topics that he brings forward? It's one, go. Fire. Fire is something he does spend a lot of time on. What else? He brings up at the very, very end the BC. Like the bathroom. Going to the bathroom and where the boys are selecting to go to the bathroom. Maybe Filling the water. Filling up the coconut shells with fresh water. Yes. Filling the shelters. Okay, good. You covered all five topics, and it takes him about four pages to get through all of that. Okay? Starting on page 79, he says, We have lots of assemblies, and everybody enjoys speaking. And we decide things, but they don't get done. And now he's going to list all of the things they said they would do, but they're not getting done. So at the, the very first topic is the coconut shells, the water. There's fresh water, we're supposed to get coconut shells and fill them up and leave them over there by that tree. And he says it happened for a couple days and now, look, the shells are dry. We're not doing what we need to do. At the bottom of page 79, he brings up, then there's the huts, the shelters. Flip the page to page 80. He says, we all built the first one. Only a few of us built the second one and Simon and I were left totally by ourselves for the third one and the whole thing's ready to fall over. And again, something we said we would do and we didn't follow through. Then on page 80, he says, there's another thing. We chose those rocks along the bathing pool as a bathroom. And it makes sense because the high tide comes in twice a day and cleans that place up. He says, now boys are going to the bathroom everywhere. This is dirty. This place is getting dirty. And so when he starts talking about this particular topic, there is a reaction that occurs from the boys who are listening to him. Because obviously, talking about a topic like that is a little uncomfortable, right? So you're talking about you know, boys going to the bathroom and where they're going to the bathroom, not something you readily discuss with your friends, I'm assuming. So what is the reaction and how do you know? What did you have for number two? Riley, go ahead. Um, they really, they really take them seriously. Um, they also kept saying, like, there's too many things that he's going with them. Yeah, at one point he says, like, oh, and there's another thing, and somebody yells out, too many things, and so you know they're not taking him seriously. Yeah. Did you have one of these quotes, like, the laughter rose yeah. again, or the assembly roared? These were all on page 80. This shows you that they're all cracking up, crying hysterically with laughter, and they're not taking him seriously, because he's talking about a topic that's, you know, a little silly. But he's serious. Too many people go in the bathroom everywhere, and that's gross. We go over the we go over those rocks to go to the bathroom, and then at the bottom of page eighty, he brings up the most important topic, which is the fire. So let's highlight bottom of page eighty, last paragraph, starting with the fire is the most important thing on the island. Highlight all that. How can we ever be rescued except by luck if we don't keep a fire going? Is a fire too much for us to make? He flung out an arm. Keep going on top of 81, keep highlighting. Look at us, how many are we? And yet we can't keep a fire going to make smoke? Don't you understand? Can't you see? We ought to, ought to die before we let the fire go out. You can pause there. Do you see how like serious he is? He's saying we should die before we let that fire on the mountain go out. It is our most critical and crucial item on the, on the island. And you can see immediately the hunters begin to giggle and he turns on them and he says, you hunters can laugh, but I tell you, the smoke is more important than the pig, however often you catch one. And so he's like trying to get that through to them, that they've got to make smoke or they're going to die. Um, so on page 81, talking about the fire, he decides he's going to make a new rule. So what is this rule on page 81 that he creates? Luke, go ahead. Uh, Ralph chooses to only ever have a fire on the mountain. And why do you think, as if you were him and you were leader, why would this be a rule that would make common sense? Go ahead, Luke. Like if they want to like gather around it or do like any sort of simple thing with it, they have to keep the one on the mountain. 
He's worried about that fire out of all of the fires being kept going. And if we have a fire on the beach and a fire over here and a fire on the mountain, there's too many people spread out tending to fires, right? And there's more of a chance that somebody's going to forget about the most important one. So logically, Ralph's making sense. It makes sense. One fire, everybody's focused on one fire, and that is the one we keep going. If you're one of the boys, though, in the group, and now this rule has been imposed on you, why might you be upset or not think that this is a, a good rule to establish? That's a long walk. So every time I need fire, I have to walk all the way through the jungle, up the mountain, to the fire. That's really inconvenient. And then what about at night? Does that mean I can't have a fire on the beach for warmth? or for a little bit of light if I'm scared. I can't ever have a fire anywhere else. So do you see how that's probably not a popular rule that he's creating and it might create a little bit of tension between him and some of the other boys. But if you're in Ralph's position, you understand where he's coming from. It makes sense. So Ralph decides that the boys will not have a fire anywhere else but on the mountain. This is a good rule in principle because then they only have one fire to worry about, but it's definitely an inconvenience for the boys who have to trek all the way up there to cook things. Okay? Okay. So let's get that um, let's get that quote that Luke gave us. So I'm right in the middle of 81, literally middle paragraph on the page, starting with, and another thing. Take that whole paragraph. And another thing. We nearly set the whole island on fire, and we waste time rolling rocks and making little cooking fires. Now, I say this and make it a rule because I am cheap. We won't have a fire anywhere but on the mountain, ever. Okay, so then he ends his speech. He, he reviews all of the things that he talked about. And on page 82, the last topic he brings up is the fear. He says, people started getting frightened. We used to be happy. And the little ones started talking about things. And now we've got to decide about what we're going to do. Are we going to be scared? Are we not going to be scared? We have to talk about this, this fear. And he puts the shell down at his feet, sort of symbolizing that his speech is done and he has finished. And the first person that's going to pick up the shell and talk next is Jack. And so he just starts letting the little ones have it. I don't know why he chooses them to lash out at, but he is letting them have it. And he says, so this is a meeting to find out what's what. I'll tell you what's what. You little and start all of this, the fear talk. Beasts, where from? Of course we're frightened sometimes, but we put up with being frightened. Only Ralph says you scream in the night. What does that mean but nightmares? Anyway, you don't hunt or build or help. You're a lot of crybabies and sissies, that's what. And as for the fear, you'll have to put up with it like the rest of us. And Ralph just looks at him like, what are you talking about? And he keeps going, bottom of 82. The thing is, fear can't hurt you any more than a dream. And there aren't any beasts to be afraid of on this island. Serves you right if something did get you, you useless lot of crybabies. But there is no animal. And Ralph's like, what is this? What are you talking about? And Jack says, you said this the other day. You said they dream and cry out. Now they talk. Not only the little ones, but my hunters sometimes. Talk of a thing, a dark thing, a beast. Some sort of animal, I've heard. You thought not, didn't you? Now listen, you don't get big animals on small islands, only pigs. You only get lions and tigers in big countries like Africa or India. I've got conk. I'm not talking about fear. I'm talking about the beast. Be frightened if you like. But as for the beast, and then he says, am I a hunter or am I not? And all the boys are like, Yep, you're a hunter. And he says, well then, I've been all over this island and by myself. If there were a beast, I'd have seen it. Be frightened because you're like that. But there is no beast in the forest. So he sort of does a good thing by saying that there's no such thing, you know, no possible way. So that's his position to start. And then he puts the conch down and Piggy picks it up. And on 83 at the bottom, Piggy starts trying to be very logical about this whole thing. And he's saying, of course there isn't nothing to be afraid of in the forest. Why, I've been there myself. He says, you'll be talking about ghosts and such things next. Go to 84. 
And he tries to be very logical and says, listen, you know, there's no such thing as a monster. Monsters don't exist. I don't believe in a beast with claws and all that. But he does say something, and this was question five, and I know these are out of order, so I'll get this one first and then come back to four. What does he say when he says, I know there's no beast and I know there isn't fear, unless, and then he says, unless we get frightened of people. What did he mean by that when he said that? Because this was question five for you guys. Josh, what do you think? He's talking about Jack. <laughs> you think he's specifically talking about Jack? I got that. He's on his son. Okay, so he like talk, he talks about how he's afraid. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. He says that he's gonna have stop, stop thinking about because he's afraid. That's true. And if we weren't to take just Piggy and Jack in isolation as these only two boys that are at odds, could we broaden it and just say, in general, if we have more relationships on the island like Jack and Piggy, where you have boys who are at odds and they're willing to resort to physical violence? Could we have a major problem on the island among this group of boys? I think that might, might be where we're going. Go ahead. Well, I said that the, 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 the little of, yes. yes. Okay. So let's get the highlight for what Piggy says. And it's going to come on page 84. And do you see this larger paragraph towards the top of the page? It's in this paragraph. It's towards the bottom of the paragraph, and I'm just going to start reading. Life, said Piggy expansively, is scientific. That's what it is. In a year or two, when the war's over, they'll be traveling to Mars and back. And I'm going to highlight right here, last line of the paragraph. I know there isn't no beast, not with claws and all that, I mean, but I know there isn't no fear either. Piggy paused. Unless, Ralph moved restlessly. Unless what? Unless we get frightened of people. Pause there. And I'm going to take that whole little back and forth between the two of them. Okay, and I think you guys are definitely onto something. Piggy's trying to say in a roundabout way that we don't have to be afraid of a monster who lives in the jungle. What we need to fear is each other. Because if things continue the way that they are going now, we might have to be fearful of one another. Do you understand that? Does that make sense? Because things are not going to plan right now, okay? So I'll get to that answer in a second. Right here where we left off is the first little one who steps forward. What's his name and what does he say? This would be your first answer for four. Um, yeah, Riley, go ahead. Um, well, this Bill, he talked about like, his nightmare when he saw the trees. Okay, good. Yeah, Phil is the first little boy. He says something about having a nightmare or a dream, but he does say something concrete because he says it twice. Lucy, you remember? Um, he said there's something like with the twisty things that's going to grab him, and they were moving around, and he saw something roaming. Like he saw something. Yeah. yeah, he definitely saw something. So on 85, can you count down with me? Um, three indents down, top of 85. Do you see the paragraph that starts with, and I was frightened? You see where I am? Highlight. And I was frightened, and I started to call out for Ralph, and then I saw something moving among the trees, something big and horrid. Pause there. And Ralph tries to say it was a nightmare and that he was walking in his sleep, and he shakes his head and he says no. And if you jump down a couple indents, he'll say a second time, I was asleep. And when the twisty things were fighting, and when they went away, I was awake, and I saw something big and horrid moving in the trees. So he claims that he was awake, and he definitely saw something moving in the jungle, okay, twice. So now, Ralph, again, down here, says, you were asleep, okay? There wasn't anyone there. How could anybody be wandering about in the forest at night? Was anyone, did anyone go out? So he asks the group. Was anybody out in the dark in the jungle? Like, he knows the answer is going to be heck no, because they're all afraid. And right there is where we're going to pick up a highlight. So I'm right below the halfway point, and you're going to start with the paragraph that says, there was a long pause. You see where I am? Highlight. There was a long pause, pause while the assembly grinned at the thought of anyone going out in the darkness. And then Simon stood up, and Ralph looked at him in astonishment. You? What were you mucking about in the dark for? Simon grabs the conk convulsively. Keep going. I wanted to go to a place, a place I know. 
Well, what place? Just a place I know, a place in the jungle. And you can pause there. Okay, so problem solved, right? Well, yeah. It should be. He saw something in the jungle. Simon steps forward, say. right, and says, it was me. There's no beast. Problem solved. Whew. Nothing to be afraid of. Great. It's not how children that's not how kids work. We would think that they would pick up on this and go, oh yeah, it was just Simon, problem solved. But that's not what happens. What happens is, Ralph says to him, don't do it again. You hear me? That's the bottom of 85. And then a second little boy steps forward. And who's the second little boy? And what does he say? Which then sends everybody back into panic for a second time. Go ahead. Absolutely. So Percival is the second little boy that steps forward, and he says, uh-uh, the beast doesn't come out of the jungle. The beast comes out of the sea. And that starts a whole wave of panic. Okay, so this happens on 86 is where Percival steps forward. Okay, they give you a whole little blurb about him. Um, they do mention the boy with the mulberry birthmark. Again, did you see that? It said, no one had seen the mulberry colored birthmark again. So just one more like, you know, that they haven't seen him. Um, they ask him his name. He tells them his name. 87 people are interrupting. And then 87 below the halfway point, it says Jack was the first to make himself heard. He had not got the comic and thus spoke against the rules, but nobody minded. How is that irony in this scene? Yeah. I meant no, no, Ralph or is yelling at everyone to like not talk when they're on the and then he just goes ahead with it. The whole point of the meeting was to go over the rules and put them back in place. And it says that nobody minded. So it says, um, you know, he goes, What about the beast? Where does the beast live? And this is Jack yelling at Percival. And I don't know if you guys caught on, but Percival's a little one, so he's about six. And he, it's really late, and he's probably tired, and so what's happening to him is he's like almost falling asleep standing up, and that's why he's not answering. And at the bottom of 87, do you see where it says, what does he say? Bottom of 87, highlight. What does he say? Flip the page. Keep highlighting. Jack listened to Percival's answer and then let go of him. Percival, released, surrounded by the comfortable presence of humans, fell into the long grass and went to sleep. Jack cleared his throat and then reported casually, he says, the beast comes out of the sea. And what happens on page 88 as soon as Percival says this? Like, remember when somebody was like, make a fire, and all the boys went running up the mountain, fire, fire, and they were all insane? What happens when somebody says that the beast comes out of the sea? What's the reaction of the boys on this page? What kinds of things are they saying? Which sort of like heightens the anxiety level. Well, Rory said that his dad said he was find all the animals in the sea yet. Daddy says they haven't found all the animals in the sea yet. What else do they talk about? Somebody brings up what? Oh, the squid. A giant squid that can come out of the ocean. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so now they're all like yelling, a squid could come out of the water. No, it couldn't. Yes, it could. And they're all yelling and arguing. And right there is Simon. And he's listening to all of this, okay? And I think he feels like, geez, guys, like I just admitted it was me. Like, why are we still talking about this? But you have to understand that Simon's a sensitive kid and he doesn't like to talk in front of groups. Like, you know when kids have like that anxiety to get up in public space? You know, do public speaking in front of a group of people, like you have butterflies in your stomach and you start to sweat, you start to shake, you're nervous. No. Simon doesn't like that, okay? So he wants to say something because he feels that it's necessary to say something, but he's terrified to talk in front of the group. So at the bottom of 88, do you see the very last sentence starts right here and then it continues up to 89? Do you see at the very bottom of 88 it says Simon felt a perilous, and then it continues up to the top, we're going to highlight that. Ready? Simon felt a perilous necessity to speak, but to speak in assembly was a terrible thing to him. Keep highlighting. Maybe, he said hesitantly, maybe there is a beast. Okay, stop there. So he says, guys, 
maybe there is a beast. But then he gets interrupted. And when he finally can finish his thought, what does he say? Maybe there is a beast. What? But it us. What I mean is, maybe it's only us. So what I want you to do is after he says, maybe, maybe there is a beast, I'm going to come all the way down through all that yelling back and forth. And I want you to find, it says Ralph shouted, hear him. He's got the conk. What I mean is, maybe it's only us. And you're going to highlight that secondary part he adds. What does he mean when you put it all together? Guys, maybe there is a beast. Maybe it's only us. What do you think he means? Maybe they're all going crazy. So when we think about fear, what are what's what's the deal with the fear? Why is the fear there? Well, they're all scared. Why? What are they scared of? Is it real? Is it not real? Where's the fear coming from? What? Yes. Why? Okay. How are we gonna say? Um, I was gonna say maybe like it's um like it's among them and it's like the only like if they believe in it like it's um, one of the people that are around them. Well, you what you said just I like what you said the first part. It's only if they believe it. Yeah. So is it possible that there's really nothing to be scared of and that it's just something that they are creating themselves? Yeah, originally for some of the boys. That, like, some of the boys feel yeah. fear. What's up? <laughs> Paranoid. Absolutely. Okay. And I also like to think, you know, like I throw these questions at you. Um, why was a quarter mile stretch of fire set on the mountain? Why did a little boy perish in the fire by accident? Why did the fire on the mountain go out? Why did a ship pass and a, and a chance for rescue get missed? Why are none of the rules being followed? Right? Why is all of the trouble on the island coming about? Jack. Well, but collectively, themselves, they are the ones who are not doing the right things and not focused on the right things and are careless with things. And so they might be the reason why all of the stuff is happening is what he's trying to say. So not only the fear, but also the reason why things are bad, right? So look, it says he's trying to make the boys understand that the beast, it's them, right? They are creating the fear. They are the beast and the cause of everything bad that has happened on the island. And the boys' reaction to this, if you look right after where he says it, Piggy actually says this. He goes, nuts. They always think that Simon's crazy, that he's just weird or different, and they call him nuts. Like, you're crazy. That's not the answer. And all the boys start to laugh. All right? And so one other piece of quote we're going to take on page 89 is down here towards the bottom. So if you go to the bottom of the page and you count up, it's about 11 lines up from the bottom. And you're going to highlight a little paragraph that says, Simon's effort fell about him in ruins, and the laughter beat him cruelly, and he shrank away defenseless to his seat. So he's totally shot down. His answer, or his, you know, his his thought was is uh, seemed you know as crazy talk, and they're not going to listen. Okay. All right, ninety. Flip the page. Somebody brings up ghosts, they start talking about if ghosts exist. So that just adds to the uh, fear, okay? Page 90, right in the middle, Ralph tries. He says there's too much talking at a turn because you can't have proper assemblies if you don't stick to the rules. And again, careful, his plan of this assembly had broken down. And he actually apologizes to the boys at one point, says I, I, sh I should have never called this meeting so late. It's my fault. They take a vote on how many people believe in ghosts and everybody's hand goes up. So Ralph feels pretty defeated at this point. Top of page 91, highlight the world, that understandable and lawful world was slipping away. Once there was this and that and now, and the ship had gone. Stop there. 
Piggy picks up the conch, he starts yelling at the group, and I want you to calm down about seven or eight lines, and we're gonna highlight, what are we, humans or animals or savages? What's grown-ups going to think? Going off hunting pigs and letting fires out, and now, pause there. And because he says, and letting fires out, Jack immediately gets up and gets in his face. You shut up, you fat slug. And there was a moment struggle, and Piggy's holding on one side of the shell, and Jack's holding on the other side, and they're pulling the shell back and forth, and arguing. And look at, Ralph steps in and he says, Jack, Jack, you haven't got the conk. You let him speak. And Jack's face got right into Ralph's, and he says, and you shut up. Who are you anyway, sitting there telling people what to do? You can't hunt. You can't sing. So important. Singing is yeah, the defining quality. And he says, I'm chief. I was chosen. And Jack says, why should choosing make any difference? Just giving orders. That don't make any sense. Piggy's got the conk. That's right. Favor Piggy as you always do. And he can't believe that Jack just said that. And he's like, Jack. And immediately Jack starts to make fun of Ralph. And he goes, Jack, Jack. And he's mimicking him. And we're going to highlight right here the rules shouted Ralph, you're breaking the rules. Yes, that was my quote. And what does Jack say in response? Who cares? Who cares? And it says, Ralph summoned his wits. Because the rules are the only thing we've got. And if you look at Jack's response, bottom of 91, highlight, bollocks to the rules. We're strong, we hunt. If there's a beast, we'll hunt it down. We'll close in and beat, and beat, and beat. So he just got done saying earlier in the chapter that there was no beast, and now again he's saying, well, if there is one, don't I'll you worry, it. I'll get it. I'll kill it, okay? And he jumps off the platform, and in the excitement, all of the boys go with him, okay? So how he challenges the authority of Ralph is literally, he gets in his face and is like, who are you to be telling me what to do? Like that. That would be my response. Okay. So this tells you a lot, does it not? Who cares? He's starting to catch on that there's nobody there. Okay. Nobody there to tell him anything. All right. So the boys jump down. They all start running out onto the beach in the dark. And what they are doing is they're chanting again with Jack in the lead. And the only people that are left in the meeting are Simon, Ralph, and Piggy. And they're sitting there, and Piggy's like, throw the conk and call them back, and I wanna highlight what Ralph says, because he's right. It's right here in the middle of 92. He says, if I blow the conk and they don't come back, then we've had it. We shan't keep a fire going, and we'll be like animals. We'll never be rescued. He knows that if he blows the conk right now and they don't listen, he's really not chief anymore. So he doesn't want to risk it. Top of 93, third line down, highlight, I ought to give up being chief. What is Piggy's reaction? How does he persuade Jack, I mean, um, Ralph, to stay in this position? What happens? I want a new hand. A new one. A new one. Uh, look at my one. I have all these hands. Is that a hand? Go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. Jack is chief. We have all hunting, no fire, we all need to be here for this. Yeah, he grabs on to Ralph and he says, oh, Lord, oh, no! Right? If Jack was chief, we'd have all hunting and no fire. We'd be here until we died. You can highlight that. He's very emphatic about him not giving up. That's um, like about four lines down from where you highlighted last, or three lines down. If Jack was chief, we'd have all hunting and no fire, and we'd be here until we die. Okay? And then if you drop down a couple more lines, I'm going to keep going. Listen. If you give up, what would happen to me? And Ralph's like, nothing. And he says, uh-uh, he hates me. I don't know why. If he could do what he wanted, you're all right. He respects you. Besides, you'd hit him. And then if you drop down, he says, I'm scared of him. And that's why I know him. If you're scared of someone, you hate him, but you can't stop thinking about him. You kid yourself, he's all right, really, and then when you see him again, it's like asthma and you can't breathe. I tell you what, he hates you too, Ralph. And Ralph's like, me, why me? And he says, I don't know, you got him over the fire and you're
your chief and he isn't. And at the very, very bottom, let's highlight the last thing that Piggy says. And this really tells us a lot about why he is so desperate to keep Jack in, in charge. I mean, Ralph in charge. He says, highlight, I've been in bed so much and done some thinking. I know about people and I know about me. And him, he can't hurt you. But if you stand out of the way, he'd hurt the next thing. And that's me. Okay. So Piggy is... Um, he is predicting, if you stop being chief, he's going to come for me. I'm going to be the first thing that he goes after. So you have to stay in charge. Okay? Hold on. Almost done. All right, 94. Top of the page. Even Simon says, take these right, Ralph. There's you and Jack. Like, there's him and you. Go on being chief. And I want you to highlight where Ralph says, we're all drifting and things are going rotten. At home, there was always a grown-up. Please, sir, and please, miss, and then you got an answer. Oh, how I wish. Why is this irony? <coughs> Think back to chapter one. Because uh, in the beginning, he like was like jumping up and down that there's no adults. But he was doing uh, cartwheels. Yeah. No grown-ups. And what is he wishing for at the end of chapter five? Grown a grown-up. He's like desperately praying that there was a, somebody to tell him what to do. And if you come down the page to the very last thing he says, we're going to highlight one more time. If only they could get the message to us, cried Ralph desperately. If only they could send us something grown up, a sign or something. And that's going to be the answer to number nine. He wants something. Okay? And when we look at chapter six tonight, that's exactly what's going to arrive. Something is going to arrive on the island. So you have to read carefully. What arrives?